hey guys welcome back to my channel in this video i'm going to be showing you how to make your very own sleepwear diy velvet short so if you want to know how we made it keep watching don't forget to share this video with your friends like this video if you enjoyed it and leave your thoughts in the comment section so let's get started so right now i'm just marking out the length of my short which is 15 inches and if you can notice i'm not starting out from the direct edge i'm leaving about one inch before marking out my 15 inches this is because the fabric this material is very stretchy and so while cutting it out from the fabric store the edge called in and because i want definite edges on both the front and the back i am leaving about one inch that is what i am doing and then i'm using a ruler to mark it out but if your fabric is not the stretchy type, if it doesn't curl in like mine, then you don't necessarily have to leave about one inch to start off your length. But mine is... Anywho, I'm just going to mark... Okay, I've done that already. And I'm just measuring to make sure I have exactly my 15 inches and doing the necessary corrections. I'm using a trouser as a template to cut the shorts. You can use a leggings, a short, whatever that fits you perfectly. So my waistband is two inches, and that's what I am marking. As you can see, I'm marking four inches because this show we are making, the first show we are making, has a built-in waistband. So that is what brings about this four inches we are cutting out. Two inches for the original length of the waistband, and the other two inches to turn it in. So while cutting out your fabric, don't forget to leave seam allowance. We don't want our fabric to be too tight on us and making enough fit us. So now what I'm doing is that I raised the short to be able to cut it and then I replicated it on the other side. So what I'm doing now is I'm just marking out exactly the same length I cut for the front piece, for the back piece, folding my fabric in full as well. Now the mistake I made was I cut a separate template for the front and the back which wasn't necessary considering my fabric is very stretchy. As you can see, I'm measuring 4 inches like I did for the front, 4 inches which is going to account for the waistband. Remember, remember that we are making a built-in waistband. So I'm measuring 2 inches and making sure that I have 2 inches. Just, that's just what I am doing. Now, if your fabric is stretchy like mine, you don't need to cut a separate template for the front piece and the back piece. But if your fabric is not stretchy, then you can do this method I am. But remember to cut exactly the same piece. Replicate exactly what you have for the front. Because I made this mistake. I'm The depth of my crotch for the front was very different from the depth of my crotch for the back. But I was able to go around this. It wasn't an issue. But just so you don't have issues like I did... Try cutting the front and the back piece exactly the same if you are cutting it separately. But my fabric was stretchy, so I necessarily did not have to cut the front and the back piece differently. So if your fabric is stretchy, then just cut the same piece. Just cut exactly the same piece. So remember that when you are cutting your fabric, remember to leave about one inch for seam allowance and ease. We don't want that shirt to be too tight on us. Remember to leave one inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to cut it out like I did for the front. And we'll be having both our front pieces and our back pieces. So in total, we'll be having four pieces together. So yeah, that's what I'm just doing. Don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up if you like it. Share this video with your friends who you think might also benefit from this video. And comment what you think about this video. And if you have questions, also leave it in the comments. If you have suggestions, leave it in the comments. I'll be more than eager to read and reply, you guys. And I hope this video is as simple as I want it to be. With the front and back pieces together, so the crotch area and then the hip line. And then do the same for the back, so the crotch area and then the hip line as well. Sorry, the camera is tilted. After sewing, one fabric should be on the right side and the other fabric should be on the wrong side. Now from the crotch area, put in one fabric into the other and then pin all round. So I'm just showing you guys again, for those who might not have understood what I am doing, put in the crotch of one fabric into the crotch of the other fabric. 
Now you remember that I said that the crotch depth of one of the back was different from the front. So start off with the edge and pin there. Not minding the length, just pin from the edge. Now after pinning from the crotch area, I'm going to pin straight up to the waist on both sides. Now a quick suggestion is that you start pinning from the waist and then meet up back to the crotch area. Because if you pin from the crotch to the waist, you'll be having one excess and one shortage. So to avoid that, after pinning the crotch area, pin the waist down to the crotch area and do the same for the other side. Pin from the waist down to the crotch area. Now after pinning all around there, you're just going to sew it. So what I'm doing now is I am pinning. Remember I said that I had issues with my pin container, like it's really difficult for me to, you know, pin things because I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm nervous, I don't know what I'm saying. But I'll be doing a DIY on a pin cushion. I'll be doing a DIY pin cushion because taking pins from the pin container is really stressful. I don't know if some of you might have noticed that. So I'm doing a DIY on a pin cushion. So if you want to know how we are doing that kind of stuff, then hit the subscribe button, like this video, share with your friends, and switch on notification bell so that when I post, you are going to be the first to be notifi notified. This is what I mean when I say that my pin container is giving me issues. Now, if you are a soulmate like me, then definitely you will need a pin cushion. Anywho, enough small talk. What I'm doing is I'm pinning all around. Like I said, start from the waist down to the crotch. And do the same for the other side. The waist down to the crotch. And after pinning, because pinning is like a guide to help you sew correctly. So after pinning, then you sew all around. So that is what I'm going to do. And yeah. Just follow my hand and sew where the hand leads you. I'll be right back. So now after sewing, I'm trying to like amend my mistakes. So I'm starting off with the waist area. I'm trimming off the excess. And then after that, I'm also going to do the same for the depth of the crotch. So what I'm doing now is I'm folding the fabric in to, so that I'll be able to replicate it on both sides. So now after cutting off the excess on the bottom part, you can see I have excess on my waist area as well. So I'm also going to do the same cutting off the excess. I'll be able to have exactly the same piece for both the front and the back piece. And you can see modifying this wasn't really an issue. And I still got my perfect shorts, just that it became shorter. But the second DIY velvet shirt I made was longer, which was what I liked. I loved it, it was perfect. So, now for the waist area, I'm just going to sew in the elastic. So, now I'm just sewing the bottom part once and doing the same for the waist area as well because my fabric does not free. Now, my waist measurement is 28, so I cut my elastic 4 inches shorter, which is 24 inches. Now for the drawstring part, I, this was the excess we cut out, so I just stretched it and I tacked it to the middle of the short. And this is the final look guys, I loved how this turned out and wow, you guys should really try it out. Now on to the second short, this short has a separate waistband, so that means we're cutting the waistband separately. So what I am doing is I'm just going to use this short to cut, I'm going to use that template to cut the other short. And as you can see, I added extra inches in length because this short was too short for me and I wanted it to be longer. So I just added extra inches to make it longer. And I can't remember the length, but I'll check the length later and I'll write it out in the description box. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing exactly what I did, cutting off with same allowance as well and remember that this is a separate waistband so i'm just going to stop exactly on the waist measurements not adding the waistband to it i'll check out the length of both shorts and i'll write them out in the description box i'm just going to stay the crotch area open as well now for this i did not cut the back and front separately i just used one piece i had cut out to cut the back as well because the stretchy fabric they are all the same So now I'm just cutting off the excess and that's basically what I am doing. I have four 
pieces for the front and for the back to each and they are all the same considering we are using a stretchy fabric they are all the same remember this is a separate waistband short so we're going to be cutting the short separately don't forget to slit the short this scrotch the crotch area open or if you can't slit it open then just trim it off like i am doing right now trim it off it's all up to you your choice that's why it's a DIY do your thing do you make it yourself do your style I know I'm saying nonsense I know on to the measurements for the waistband the width is meant to be 3 inches not 6 inches as you can see and then my waist is 28 inches so I'm cutting it by 27 because it's stretchy fabric I'm just going to repeat the same process I did for the first short putting the crotch area into the other one one side one the right side out and one the wrong side out and I'm going to pin at the crotch area and then pin all the way around to the waist starting off from the waist like I said pin from the waist to the crotch and then sew around it's exactly what I did for the separate for the beauty waist when I'm also going to be doing for the separate waistband shorts from the crotch area pin it and then pin it all the way to the waist and then sew around now for the length of the waistband the measurement is i said that my measurement was 28 inches and the measurement for this waistband is 27 remember i said i was only cut it one inch shorter because my fabric was stretching and remember i said that i made a mistake i meant to make the width to be three inches but i made the width to be the width to be six inches so i'm i didn't notice this until later but I trimmed it off though now for the drawstring I just cut off a long strip and then I stretched it and that's just what this drawstring is about and remember you're just gonna tack it at the middle of the shorts this drawstring is not a problem it's not a big deal now for the elastic band I did not really explain it in details for the other shorts the elastic band was 24 inches my waist is 28 inches and I cut it 4 inches shorter now I just repeat the same process for the shorts. What I did was I sewed through the crotch area and all that. Now for the waistband, I just folded it and I pinned it at the edge. That's just what I did. Remember I said I I later found out that the mistake I made. Later found out the mistake I made for the width, which was six inches. So I think it was here I figured I made a mistake, and I guess I trimmed it off. Yeah, I think it was here I made. I found out. The mistake I made so I trimmed it off one inch on both sides to give me four inches it's meant to be four inches because three inches is the original length when folded it gives you 1.5 but then sewing allowance included included makes it four inches it's meant to be 3.5 but four inches is also okay you can use 3.5 you can use four inches it's all up to you the one inch extra is just the same allowance so this is where I pinned and what I'm just trying to do is I'm trying to unpin so I can trim off a little on both sides. One inch is on both sides to reduce it back to four inches. Sorry about the background noise. I'm trying to film this despite the pressure because trust me. Everything is disappointing. Any peace and quiet while filming, and it's not something I'm ever going to get anytime soon. So I just have to film this, anyways. So after trimming, this is the four inches I got. Remember, I said you can use 3.5, why is four inches? When you fold it, it becomes two inches, and then when you sew it, you can sew by one inch, you can sew by 0.5. It depends on how many inches allowance you left. Sorry, I'm shouting. Like I said, I'm not alone. And yeah, basically what I'm just going to do now is I'm going to fold it back and pin it and sew across that area with the pin. So after pinning, I'm just going to sew across that area and then I'm just going to fold it. And while folding, I'm going to put my waist my um, elastic band as well so 
so i have extra drawstrings i can use for later projects this is just how you do you cut off strips and then you just draw them and that's how you get your drawstring so after sewing that i'm just going to fold it in half and then i'm going to add my elastic band my elastic band is 24 inches so i'm just going to sew okay i'm folding my waistband in half okay i'm trimming off so that i don't have bulges that's just what i'm doing you can do that as well try not to trim on where you've sewn so it doesn't lose now i'm just going to fold it back in half and then for the elastic band i'm just going to sew both edges together to seal it off then i'm going to add the elastic band into the waistband and basically i'm just going to attach it to the short and then sew around so i'm trying to get the midpoint of both my waistband and my elastic band and i'm just going to notch it on the short as well So now for the elastic where I am trying to use a pin to pin, that's why I'm just going to sew to seal it off. And after sealing it off, attach it back to the waistband and then sew it together to the shorts. So where I'm pinning now, I'm just going to sew a straight line. You can hand stitch it or you can use the sewing machine, it depends on you. Anyways, you find the midpoint of the elastic as well and find the midpoint of the waistband so from that midpoint that is where you pin as well that's what i'm doing i found the midpoint for both the elastic and the waistband and then i pin there then after that you also find the midpoint of the short as well now after finding the midpoint of the elastic on and the waistband then you also find midpoint of those midpoints <laughs> it's confusing but i just hope you guys understand what i'm doing is after pinning to hold the elastic in place i'm going to wear it to the shorts and like I said, after finding the midpoint on the elastic, on the waistband, find the midpoint on the short and then pin it. That's what I'm doing. From the midpoint of the waistband, I'm pinning it to the midpoint of the short. And I'm just going to do it for the other side as well. And then the midpoint of those midpoints. <laughs> So after successfully pinning it on the short, the whole essence of pinning it is for you to be able to sew for you to be able to sew easily so you don't have hassle while sewing i'm stressed out i just came back from a long tiring journey and i'm filming this the best you guys can do is subscribe to my channel like this video comment with your friends honestly speaking i filmed this video in the night and i filmed this video for over a week or two and right now i'm just editing it because i've edited this video twice and it's frustrating because i keep having issues Anyways, after pinning, I'm just going to sew around where I have pinned. Remember to allow your elastic. To, you don't want a situation where your elastic is, you know, different. Let's sew the bottom edges as well. And then tack your drawstring to the midpoint of your shirt. And voila, you're done. And this is the end result of the shirt. One with the built-in waistband and the other with the separate waistband and they both came out beautiful whichever one you try out trust me they're all going to be nice share this video with your friends comment what you think about this video and give this video a huge thumbs up if you liked it see you guys next week bye